stay on mute. Everybody stay on mute with their cameras on. Everybody, if your screen name says iPhone, change it to your name. Nobody's name is iPhone. Fifty Williams, you're no exception. Cameras on. Cameras on, cameras on, cameras on. This is a calendar call. Y'all would be sitting here in my courtroom. Cameras on. If you don't turn the cameras on, I'm putting you out because we've had some interlopers somehow get onto this uh, Zoom link and that's not what they're supposed to do. Cynthia Williams, waiting on you, Cynthia Williams. Well, let's put Cynthia Williams back in the waiting room until she figures out how. Okay. So let's see. Uh, I see Mr. Ma Mr. Mayor, you can kind of hear it on the. Okay, we're, this is this is pretty much a compliance, right? So this is, we have a status hearing scheduled for today. I represent Michelle Williams, Your Honor. Yeah, Ms. Lundig, who are you here for? Ms. Lundig, which case? Hi, Judge. You? How are you? I'm doing well. Which case are you here for? I'm here in the Bell case. I just got retained, so I haven't even entered a formal appearance yet, but I think counsel and I have reached an agreement on that matter, um, so we can report to the court if Your Honor would I like. I think, uh, who's, who's the other counsel? Are you representing Mr. Bell? Judge, I'm here for Mr. Bell, David Seltzer. I filed a motion for pro hoc appearance earlier this week with the Georgia State Bar. It's pending. Oh, where so, are you barred? Florida. Oh. Come on up here to Atlanta. We have a great time. So have you guys spoken? And Ms. Limbick, you know the status of your client, am I right? Yeah, my client is with me, um, Ms. Bell and Mr. Yes, Bell we, online. And you and you folks is Ms. Free, is that the one that I got delivered to me? I'll confirm you. Uh, it's in my I think it's in my box out there. Yeah, I think it's in my mailbox. Well, then was it already done, Ms. Lemmick? Because what was delivered to me? We didn't deliver anything. I mean, I we think emailed some documents yesterday to the court regarding the hearing. Uh, for this, I'm sorry, a separate case. Oh, separate case. Okay. Um, do we need to go into a breakout? Do I need to put you on a breakout room to continue talking? No, Judge, I think we have an agreement in principle that's going to be ratified in the family case. And um, I think at this point, we will agree to dismiss the TPO without prejudice and move the, uh, and Ms. Lembeck will draft the agreement to uh, be ratified with Mr. Woody in the family division. So Ms. Lembeck, I mean, here, typically here's what we do is that I will dismiss this when that other one is done. So Ms. Lembeck, if you want to, well, you know that Ms. Lembeck, we've done this before because I don't like for one to go away and there not be protection just in case Ms. Lembeck is always, you know, Johnny on the spot gives it to me immediately. But if you send me both, Ms. Lembeck, you know, I'll, I will e-file them both in the family case and I'll file it in this one. But do you want to, once you send me y'all's agreement, we'll e-file it for you and then I'll e-file the, we'll e the dismissal in this. Does that sound good to you? Yes. And so you, want, you want the settlement agreement, McDaniel? I don't like looking at your. I don't like looking at. Uh, yep, yeah, face, face, there you go. All right. So, do you want me to follow your? Is there a divorce? Is that what I'm following in? Uh, yes. There is a divorce case pending. And it's here. It's here, right? Yes, Judge. Do you, whatever you send me, get me file it in the divorce case for you. Yes, that would be great. All right. And then, do you want it filed in this case, or you just want a dismissal file? Just a dismissal. Right, we'll put note on there that you came to an agreement in the divorce case and, uh, and you know, this was. So if y'all both put your emails in the chat, y'all will definitely order the name. For sure. So if you, and you know my email, Ms. Lindbeck, if not, if I just broadcast it all over the world. So if you just send me, yeah, if you just email it to me, y'all's agreement, and um, I'll, which division is it in? Or which judge? Judge Williams. Yeah, I'd be glad to, um, is it anything I need to sign or is it just an agreement? Uh, I'll, we will be doing a temporary order in the divorce case. So it'll need a signature? It'll need a judge's signature, yes. Okay, that's what I am. And I'll be glad to sign it for you. And that way you have a really quick turnaround, okay? Okay, and will you, you will handle the dismissal or do we need to draft that too? Well, I mean, I'll 
unless you wanted to say something specific, we'll just put dismiss, came to an agreement, a temporary agreement, the divorce, and we'll e file that. But that way, your temporary order gets e filed and gets in place really quickly. And this is position six, Ms. Free. We'll do both of them. So you just want to email them both to me, we'll do it. And if we got y'all's email, once we get it e filed, obviously you'll get a copy of the temporary order in you through e file Georgia, but we'll send you a copy of this too. Okay. Okay. All right, thank guys. You. Maybe we thank excuse. You folks. Absolutely. Okay, Have thank you. Thank you. Monica, Ms. Limbick, let's light it up on Sunday. Thank you. Same to All you. All right. Who we got next here? So uh, David Bill, Melissa Bill, y'all could leave. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, sir. Have a good holiday. All right. So when I call your name, take yourself off of mute. It comes another Samsung. Somebody else that can't connect audio. Samsung SMA one three five U. Okay, stay like that. Stay on mute. Don't need to say in more. I see your nose. Let me see it. Pull your camera down. In more. Pull your camera down. There you go. All right. When I call your name, take yourself off of mute. And before you leave this meeting today, put your email in the chat. Marion Elder Cargill. Ronald Cargill. Ready to appear? Donald Williams. And then Mr. Merritt was on the phone with Michelle Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good morning again, Your Honor. I'm multitasking here because no, I was trying awesome. to figure out. Is that the one? Trying to figure out where am I? I'm sorry. Oh, Separate case. Separate case. Okay, because I've got a copy of a uh, from a report from MH. So how is it going? Oh, in your honor, I was I was trying to make sure my client was on the Zoom, and I think that may be her Samsung, but I can't quite. I'm not Samsung. sure. Samsung, 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 is that her? <laughs> Michelle, take yourself off mute. Samsung, Samsung, whoa, Samsung, sitting on the couch. Samsung, Samsung, pull it. You gotta take. I don't know your name, except for it says Samsung. Can you take yourself off mute? Hit that little microphone. What's your this name? This is Matt? my name is Phyllis Martin, but the okay. case is with Miss okay, okay. Evelyn Lester. Okay. Evelyn right. I'm all, hold, Lester. okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll put you back on mute. So it doesn't look like. Oh, so I I had oh, my that's assist... Mr. Way Mr. Williams is right there, but he's not connecting the audio. So Mr. Williams is there, and I had my assistant who I was on the phone with said that Michelle Williams is in the. She says she's been on the Zoom for quite some time, is in the waiting room, um, but I trust your staff. Yeah, so I don't I don't know what the disconnect is. If you'd like me to, if I can judge, I'll mute myself and make another phone call. Absolutely, go ahead. Okay, thank you. All right, Tamika Cutler. Tamika Cutler, yes, in are. more, in more, Miss in more. I've got to see you. Pick your phone up, hold it, this isn't that much. Joseph Gordon. Anything, Ms. Sandifer? All right, failure to appear. Eugene Gilmore. Kristen Combs. Failure to appear. Nicole Moore. So you walking around, take yourself off mute. I got Michael. Anyway, so they're unable to locate Michael. So I don't know if it's a good address or not a good address, but the sheriff's department, whom I do not work for, nor does anyone in my office says they're unable to locate. So your case is reset, ma'am, till January the 6th at 11 a.m. Do you place okay. your email? Do you place your email in the chat? Ms. Free is going to email you that reset notice. It'll give you the new Zoom link and the sheriff's form. You need to get that sheriff's form filled out completely with okay. a four-hour time. Four hour time frame, everything you need to uh, locate from the sheriff's department to do that and get it back to her before 4 p.m. today. Okay. Once you okay. put your email in the chat, Miss Moore, you can go ahead and leave the meeting. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Uh, Deion Shea McDaniel. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Amir, Amir Lee Park.
All right. Uh, ma'am, according to the sheriff's department, they were not at home. And your case is reset for January the 6th at 11. This, uh, we don't oh, have to No, you can't. Hold on. You're going to listen to me first, okay? Yes, ma'am. He didn't have an email for you. So if you're still wanting to go forward, just give me a yes or a no. Do you still want to go forward? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what I need you to do is put your email in the chat to Miss Free, and we'll send you a reset notice of the sheriff's form, okay? You fill out that sheriff's form, but when the sheriff went by, it said not at home, which meant you may not have put a two to four hour time frame, and the sheriff just went by whenever they could go by. So if you put a two to four hour time frame and you put um, like if there's gate codes, door codes, anything like that, you have to put that on there. The most information you can give to the sheriff's department, then you can. Oh, and I know what happened on this one. He showed up at the ex parte. Don't know how, but. Miss, I'm sorry, Miss Free knows your email. Yes, I do have it. So, are you not with Save Families? Is it, didn't you send? I spoke yes. to Kristen about this case in particular, and I believe she, she reached out to her personally. Okay, yes, I do remember them speaking okay. about that. Uh, all right, um, so, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want you to say a word. Miss Sanford, so y'all are going to take care of this, Miss Sanford? Yeah, I'm, and I. Okay, so Miss McDaniel. Here's what we're going to do for your safety. We're going to put you in a breakout room. So anything you need to say, I want you to say it to Miss Sandifer, and she will come back and tell us, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Let me say it. All right. One, Sandifer. So you, Miss Sandifer will take care of us, but your reset date is then? All right. I see where we're at. I remember that now. Kevin Hodge. Shaquandra Rogers. Failure to appear. Evelyn Lester. You're welcome. Yeah. So tell the young gentleman, welcome back there, put a shirt on, but we'll see him in his underwear, or whatever he's walking around in. Yeah. 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 So, uh, hey, Miss Lester, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you, Judge? I'm fantastic now that you're on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you the host and let you take over and let you hear the rest of these. Yes, please. You'll, uh, do that. Uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear the rest of them for me? I beg your pardon? You'll hear the rest of these cases for me? Do I want to hear the rest of them? Yeah, take my job for the day. No. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> no. no. But, but look at uh, Ms. Lester, you could probably lay down some serious education on these folks. Okay. You could teach them things they need to be taught a long time ago, Ms. Lester. Is that your yeah, daughter? You <laughs> Is that your daughter with you? Uh, this is my girlfriend, Phyllis Martin, and All right, my let daughter me see. is... Let me see whoever's there, your daughter, somebody that's there with okay. you. My, my daughter, this Phyllis Martin's friend. Hello. And she don't want to take over for the day? No, she don't want to take over for the day. She would do good. <laughs> <laughs> she would do real good. All right, so uh, Miss Walls did not get served. Oh, you, I can just tell you, you can. She can hear me, so she didn't get served. Um, so, so Miss Martin, you're who we're emailing with, right? Okay, we're in her ear. Yeah, Miss Martin. Yes. Is that yes, you ma'am? You're her? Yes, okay. You, you can keep it on you. We're going to email you the reset notice. Okay. And the sheriff's form. Okay. All right? So fill out that sheriff's form, and but we need uh, as much information like a time frame where Miss Walls could be um, served, two to four hour time frame, the best way, and best time to serve her. Okay. Okay. So get it back to Miss Free before four p.m. today. Before four p.m. today. So you gonna yes, email it to me now? Miss Miss Free is going to. We got your Gmail address. Okay. All right, so it'll be the reset notice. It'll tell you the day to, to come next in the sheriff's form. We got to fill it out her address, good time to serve her. And that could be like 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. We don't know. All right. 
that we can okay. get But you tell uh, Miss Lester, I wish she has a good holiday, stays healthy and safe, and I'm going to see her in 2023, January the 6th. Yes, ma'am. She cooking Do she dinner? has to come she in? Cooking? No, ma'am, she can come on Zoom. I just want to know, is she cooking dinner for the holidays? She said you're cooking dinner for the holidays? Uh, no, not that I know of. Hopefully, I have company coming uh, from New York to visit me. Well, who, well, if it was her cooking, I was coming over there. I'm just letting you know. No, you can, you can still come. We're going to have some hamburgers. <laughs> oh, okay, now. You, can probably, you know, my grandma used to say, you can slap a scald on some hamburgers. I understand. I understand. Yeah, it's <laughs> such a pleasure talking to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll see y'all in January. You stay You stay. Uh, healthy and yes. safe, ma'am, and you have a very good holiday, and I'll see you for dinner. Okay, thank you so kindly. All right, bye-bye. All right, Cynthia bye -bye. Stodjo. Uh, Cynthia and Maxwell Montgomery. So according to them, Stodjo, it is a bad address for Mr. Montgomery. Mm -hmm. She according to the Sheriff's Department. So it's reset until January the 6th at 1230. If you place your email in chat, we're going to email you that Sheriff's form, and you can fill it out and get it back to us before 4 p.m. today. And but gate code, four to five time frame, could be in the middle of the night, just never know, and put that information in there for us, okay? I have a question. Um, since I know for sure it's not a bad address, is there any way to um, avoid someone saying that it is? Who answers the door? You're welcome to hire a private process server, but you run, oh, okay. in, yeah, you run in a whole bunch of stuff that a lot of other people do. So uh, you can have a problem process server. And I think there is a list on, is it on the website, Ms. Free? A private process server? Yes, uh, fultoncourt.org. Fultoncourt.org. Now I'll tell you, ma'am, they've updated this website and it don't work so good. So, <laughs> so, so since that's the only known address, um, what, I have to just wait until the court, is, will they revisit that address again? Oh no, I ain't going to you talk with the sheriff's office. So on that form, you need to put something like a two to four hour time frame. Could be midnight, the best time to go by there. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, ma'am. You can go ahead and uh, put your email address in the chat. We'll send you that, get that sheriff's form back to Ms. Free before 4 p.m. today. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, Galaxy A20, take yourself off mute. Is that your phone, Mr. That's Miss Williams, yes, Your Honor. All right, and Mr. Williams still hasn't connected the audio. So tell me, tell me where we're at with this, and he has it. Um, getting sure, sure, yes. So, Mr. I sent an email. I'm going to really take you behind the scenes here, Judge. I sent an email to Mr. Williams. I hope he can hear me. Mr. Williams, can you hear me? He can't. <laughs> oh, so you got no audio either way. Okay. Um, so I reached out to Mr. Williams. A couple of weeks ago to say if there's been no issues, you know, I would reach out to the court staff and, and let you know, and maybe we wouldn't even need to appear. Mr. Williams uh, expressed some concerns about Miss Williams, my client, reaching out to his son. Uh, and, and let me remind you, Judge, that they were married, they are now divorced, but that Miss Williams had reached out to his son, his sister, and a mutual friend of theirs. Now, when I dug a little bit further with my client, it seemed as though those communications had no intent to reach out to Mr. Williams. These are people that Miss Williams knew through the marriage. She, my client was reaching out to say happy birthday to, you know, to ask for money in one instance from the mutual friend because my client was low on, on money at the time. Um, I, I don't know what Mr. Williams intends to, to tell the court. And of course, I only have one side of things. So I'm, I'm always open to, I only have half the story, but I do not believe that my client has violated the terms of the court's order, which requires that she not reach out to Mr. Williams. Um, but I kind of have to turn it over to Mr. Williams, I guess, to to see if he, you know, I don't know what his position is going to be. Our position is my client has abided by the court's order and, and the case should be dismissed at this point. But I know that that's probably not Mr. Williams's position. I'm trying to be respectful of of what he is going to tell the court. <laughs> Um, I will remind you also, Your Honor, that um, I don't I don't expect, you know, you have a great memory, um, I've, I've learned, uh, but I don't expect you to remember everything that happened at a hearing six months ago, necessarily. Um, this was a mental health case. Um, that was the reason that we did not have a hearing. Um, Ms. Williams and Mr. Williams at the time of the incident that led to this 
to Mr. Williams filing the petition. That incident was a result of um, a mental health, uh, a serious mental health sort of breakdown, if you will, that my client had. Right. This is for him. He's just kind of sitting there. Keep talking. I'm listening. Okay. Um, so there was a criminal case that was brought. Mr. Williams filed the petition for this case. Um, since that time, Ms. Williams, you know, so we came to court and we explained that Ms. Williams was in the process of addressing her mental health concerns, and she's done great at that. I have nothing but positive reports. She is in therapy. She's going to therapy multiple times a month. It's, it's inconsistent, but it's, it's consistent in the sense that it's whatever the therapist says she needs to do, she does. Um, so it's either once, you know, sometimes it's once every week or once every other week, um, just whatever the therapist recommends. She is on medication now. Um, the, the therapy and the medication are helping. She no longer lives with Mr. Williams. The divorce was finalized about a month ago. Um, she has a steady job. So she is working, a, I say a nine to five, it's 7.30 to 4.30, but she has a, a regular job. She now lives with her mother. Um, which is why her mother is on the Zoom right now as Mary Cole Jones, Your Honor. So she's present. That is who Miss Williams lives with. It's her mother and her stepfather. So there's uh, three people in the household. Um, so I, you know, I had spoken to Miss Williams prior to re reaching out to Mr. Williams, and, and the feedback I got was all great, steady job, good place to live. The divorce is finalized, no issue. So it was a surprise to me to hear. What I heard from Mr. Williams, but um, you know, I think there's some truth to what Mr. Williams said. So, you know, she, you know, I talked to my client, she did reach out to them. It was not in any way to try to communicate with Mr. Williams. It was not certainly nothing harassing or, or anything of that nature. It was a happy birthday text, a happy birthday phone call. And, you know, so I, I my position is there's nothing to see here, but I don't know what Mr. Williams is going to say. I missed all that. Not connected. Mr. Williams. Take, now take a self off mute. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. What do you have to say, Mr. Williams? What do I have to say? This is compliant. Well, good morning. I was just able to join the meeting. I didn't know how to get the uh, microphone on. And right. what was the question? I'm sorry. I mean, we're here for compliance. Yes. Um, well, actually, I have a couple of things, ma'am. Um, the respondent has um, not totally observed this protection order. She has been in contact with my son and my sister and I spoke to her counsel about it and he said that the protection order was only for me but um, I'm looking at it now and it, it looks like in um, item 14 uh, it does mention have no direct or indirect contact with with my uh, with my son or family and um, she contacted my sister on her birthday. She contacted my son. You know, my son, she helped raise him, but right now he doesn't understand what's going on and why she would be reaching out to him because the way he looks at it is like, as a result of the criminal charges that came about after this TPO was violated and uh, criminal charges were filed, uh for assault on my life okay, he felt on. like hold on so what we're talking about is she went and done some inmate stuff okay so i kind of want you to let me know what i mean she's been in compliance i think uh you were able to help mr merrick said she called because of um your son y'all son i'm on trouble to say happy birthday um so trying to get to that what what else is going on specifically you don't have to go through i don't want you to put a lot of stuff out there about your son and him going through any kind of counseling i just want you to tell me has it gotten better is she doing what she needs to do no i would ask that she not contact any of my children or my family period they they, they, they were offended by her even calling her 
and they're trying to stay respectful because that's how I raised them. But they did let me know that they did not want that to continue. Mr. Mayor, maybe if you say what you said, maybe that'll I'm not. Yeah, you know, Judge, my my position would be, you know, if if, if that's the order of the court, then uh, you know, I'm I was trying to pull up the order um, to see what <laughs> language what well, languages are referring I to. I, I think I've got it. I can't. The one in June, right? Yes, it was dated June 3rd, signed by you, it sent back to me. I think it's item 14. Um, so that's just a continuous order. So we're going on the original order, right, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Your Honor. It was dated, it's file stamped May 13th, 2022. Now I'm looking at it. All right, yeah, it's the standard language. But the... Right, child, but, child but number, right, number 12, it, it specifically crosses out. I think he may be looking at his own petition as opposed to the actual order. Oh, yeah. No, it crosses out the minor children. Right. The minor child is not included in this. Yeah, it says um, the court restrains the enjoined respondent from having any direct or direct or indirect contact with the petitioner or the petition, petitioner's children. No, and then that's children what, is scratched out. Okay, so on the one you signed, that, when I signed, I've got I've got it pulled up right here. The one I signed says children is is crossed out. So, yeah, um, crossed out. okay. Now I will say so, Mr. Williams. I will say this. I will, <laughs> you know, I'll talk to Miss Williams. I, I don't know that she needs to reach out necessarily to say happy birthday. I mean, I can talk to her about that if that is a concern. Um, I just wanted to make clear to the court that she has not violated your order because um, I advised her about what was and was not appropriate after our last hearing, of course, and before that. Um, reaching out to his son to say happy birthday is not a violation of the order. Um, I don't know what kind of, I would have to talk to Ms. Williams more to see what type of relationship she maintains with Mr. Williams' son, obviously they had a relationship while they were married. Um, and so if that's not something that is a big deal to Ms. Williams, then we could just make it easy on everybody and just and just say, well, well she won't reach out to, to him either. Of course, my hope was to close the case out today considering everything I've told you before, Your Honor, if I need to repeat myself so that Mr. Williams can hear me, I, I'm happy no, to do you that. Can let, you can let him know what you said, that'd be fine. Okay, Mr. Williams, what I was telling the judge before, I did, just so you know, I did let the judge know that you had these concerns. I started by by letting the judge know that I had reached out to you several weeks ago to say if there were no issues, then I would reach out to the court on both of our behalves and, and ask that the court, you know, let the court know that we don't need a hearing and that you responded to that email by, by letting me know that you did have some concerns that Miss Williams had reached out to your son, your sister, and a mutual friend uh, to say happy birthday in one instance, to ask for money in another instance. So I, I let the court know about our communications regarding that matter. Um, I also let the court know that at the time that the incident took place that um, is the reason for you to have filed a petition in this case, that you two were married and that you two were living together and that that is no longer the case that you the divorce was finalized about a month ago that miss williams has moved out she now lives with her mother um, and stepfather 
that Miss Williams is undergoing therapy. She's compliant with her therapy. She is on medication now to address the mental health issues that we had concerns about. She's compliant with her medication. She has a job. Um, she has a full-time Monday through Friday job. So my position with the court was that she's been in compliance with the order and the circumstances that existed at the time of this incident, you know, many months ago at this point, no longer exist in the sense that you don't live together anymore, you're not married, my client is in therapy, she has a job and she is on medication. Um, so my position was she's been in compliance, circumstances have changed such that you should no longer be in concern, have any concerns about your health and safety as it pertains to Ms. Williams. And so I would ask that the court dismiss the case, but I did let the court know that you had expressed those concerns to me and that you may have something to say to the court as well. So that's where we left off. Okay, and I appreciate that update. But yes, I do have still continued safety issues um, for Michelle because even though we live in a gated community, she still knows how to get in this property. She still uh, frequents Sandy Springs. Um, I've seen her, other friends have seen her. Uh, she shows up at Publix over here where I shop. They have told me they have seen her. Um, I, I don't know why she would still be here. And as far as the conversation she had with my son, it wasn't happy birthday. She was trying to discuss what happened. She called my sister on or text my sister oh, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Williams. Hold on. I can't hear what somebody else is saying. Okay. So let me ask okay. you this. Have you seen her in your neighborhood? Uh only only in passing in a vehicle, yes. I have on Roswell Road. Okay. But she, she wasn't she, at my home, no. So is she not? allowed to drive down Roswell Road? I mean, I'm just... I, I didn't say that, ma'am. I'm not saying that. Um, I mean, you said I've seen her at Publix. I mean, what has she done to you directly? That, that's what I'm needing to know is contact with you directly. No contact with me directly, ma'am. So, 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 so she's abided by the order, correct? Yes. Okay. The only contact we had was by order of a judge during the divorce. I was ordered to make her aware of certain dates, being that she did not respond as the uh, responder. So they, they didn't have any way of reaching her. They didn't have a phone number. They didn't have an email. So the court ordered me that every time they, you know, had a, a hearing or a future hearing or anything like that to send her an email and be sure that she was uh, aware of any upcoming dates, which I comply with. Judge, if I may, there, one other thing that may help the court is because this criminal case is still pending, there was an arraignment a few weeks ago, not too long ago. I'm sure Mr. Williams knows the exact date. Uh, I do not represent Ms. Williams at this time in that case. She's represented by uh, the public defender's office. But I would imagine, I, I say this because I haven't seen the order, so I'm, I'm couching this, and I would imagine that there is a no contact order in that case. Um, I was a prosecutor for many years and still do defense work, so it would be surprising to me if there was not a no contact order in a case like that, but I'm not sure. Just to let you know, sir. Um, right, hold on, I'm checking right now. What's her middle name? I don't have a middle name, ma'am. Not yours. Her middle name? Michelle, what's your middle name? You'll need to unmute yourself.
Tomas. Born in 1973. Yes, ma'am. Pulled up. I'm just looking at the yeah, it's no fun, no further contact, and then stay away from Morgan Fox. So I would I would ask the court to take that into consideration as well. If Miss Williams were to, well, let me, I guess put it this way: if this case were to be dismissed, and then Miss Williams were to contact Mr. Williams, she would be in violation of the bond order, and Mr. Williams would have a remedy. In you know, even without this case in place. The next court date is February. Uh, Kate. Case management hearing is in front of Judge Dunaway. It's this next case management hearing in front of Judge Dunaway is February the 16th. That's correct, ma'am. So, I mean, so there's a bond condition where she can't come near you. And if she does, she could be charged. And ma'am, aggravated stalking carries a sentence of up to 10 years. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I know Mr. Williams wanted you to get the help. I mean, people, and I'm not, and I'm trying to figure this out, Mr. Williams, because there is the bond condition of protection. And I'm not saying you don't need this too, but I'm saying. I mean, she's called people to say happy birthday or whatever. Um, but what, what has she, because because the, the order is that she can't be around you. Yes. Okay? Can't be around you. Now, um, so how has she came around you? And if she's calling friends of your family, I mean, she's not, she's not supposed to call them trying to get in touch with you. They're grown. Why don't they block her? I mean, they can block her down. I mean, because we're, we're dealing with some mental health issues. And uh, the only thing, I mean, there's the bond condition, but and I know you don't want to set her up where it's something because more. Miss Williams, do you understand? For those bond conditions, not only could you be charged with that, but they can revoke your bond and you will sit there in Rice Street until you go to trial. Do you yes, understand I, that? Yes, I do. I mean, just I don't want you to give me the address. So if you go up. Do you still live in that area? Is that why you're going to that pub, the Publix? I have friends. All of my friends live in Sandy Springs, which is where okay. I lived all my, since I've lived in Georgia. I got so, you, stand by, stand by, because, you know, some pro prosecutors seem to like to watch these and I don't want them to do something against you. So, mm -hmm. are they close to where Mr. Williams lives or where the two of you used to live? <laughs> They live off of Roswell Road, which is not far um, from where I used to live. Okay. But if you go, why can't you just go to their house or why can't they come to you? And I, and you know, I'm not trying to keep it. Maybe. I, I go if to I, their house. Okay. But if I had, when I, this, listen to me, if I had set this bond, I could tell you and say, right off the top of my head, I could tell you, no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons, no further contact with him, stay away from this. You gotta have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, except for court lawyer. You can get in front of me, right? That was mayor, court lawyer, medical, medical and employment. Yes, by the name of your employer, the location, proof of employment, and a schedule. I, I mean, I get that comes around to, every time. So the fact that somebody else didn't put on their view, that's them. But if he makes a call to the police that has proof of you, they will revoke your bond. And I'll speak to her about that when we're done. I mean, I don't represent her in that case, but I'm perfectly capable of uh, giving that advice. I've also advised her just to stay out of Mr. Williams' orbit. Um, I didn't know about these um, calls or texts, you know, until Mr. Williams brought them to my attention after I had reached out to him. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we're done here with that because <laughs> uh, I've advised her just to stay out of his orbit entirely. Um, but again, I, I advised her originally about what's in the order. And she's abided by the order. Um, 
if Mr. Williams wants additional protections, I mean, certainly he can do that through the court, but I don't know that any court would grant a, you know, a, a bond condition that she can't reach out to other people. I mean, when they're not involved in the case, they're not victims in the case, they weren't present, they're not witnesses. It would be unusual. Well, counsel, she did not contact my son regarding his birthday. She wanted to talk about other things and he did not want to be disrespectful. He just asked me to let her know she did. He doesn't want to be contacted. He doesn't how, want. How, how old is he? He's 28 years old. Okay, he's 28. He's an adult. Is that also? 29. Is it also her son? No, ma'am. No. Stop, ma'am. Okay. Michelle, you please go back on mute. I appreciate you. So, let, let, me, let me talk for you. If for some reason she he feels harassed, I mean, he's a grown man. He needs to get a TPO himself. He's, he's a grown man. He can block her number the same way. I mean, I don't know if some of this is, is mental health issues or whatever, and I want you to be safe, but I, I can tell one thing, and I hate to make Mr. Merrick come back one more time, but I know that right now, Ms. Williams, this, this holiday season, you're going to want to reach out to everybody. You want to send a text, whatever you want to do, and, and, and this is going to be your tempting time. Very tempting for you. And Mr. Williams may or may not know his family. And Mr. Williams, you need to tell your family if they don't want to talk to her, they need to block her number. Well, they can reach out to me, Your Honor. That's what I want to right. say is I've, I've been, and Mr. I appreciate Mr. Williams. I want to say he's been communicate, com communicative with me and respectful. We've been respectful to each other. But at any point in time, you know, I, I'm an open door, Judge. Come, come talk to me. You got my email address. You got my phone number. Um, so I, I, it was news to me, you know, two weeks ago. Yeah, so please let him know, Mr. Williams. I mean, I, I, I've known Mr. Merritt, and there'd be some lawyers that I'd say aren't going to say a word. But I know Mr. Merritt will, will, will say something. So if she does, have, I mean, call him and let him know. But those folks are grown. As long as she's not calling you or getting around you. Now, Ms. Williams, I tell you when I've been in Fort County, it, it, wherever you're living, Roswell, wherever you're living, if you've got to go by Publix, go by the Publix where you live. Don't go by the Publix up there. Don't put yourself in a situation, Ms. Williams, that you could run into him. If he likes to go to whatever, you know, I'm not saying that you drink or don't drink, Mr. Williams, but let's say he likes to go get his little bottle of Hennessy on Friday at the liquor store down the street. Don't go to the same liquor store down the street because you know that's where he goes. If he goes to the coffee shop down the street, don't go there. Your life has changed, Ms. Williams. It is not the same. And this is a you problem. It's not a Mr. Williams problem. So you've got to avoid him. If something happens and you stop it, I don't know, there's a gas station and he's there, you better put her on down to the next gas station because he doesn't have to leave, you do. Ma'am, I don't want to see you in prison. And I think in his heart of hearts, Mr. Williams wants you to get help. But Mr. Williams today, call all your relatives and say block her. I can't let you speak for them. You're saying they don't, but if they don't want to talk, tell them to block her. Okay? Well, yes, I'm just going to make you come back one more time, Mr. Merritt, because he knows now, Ms. Williams, that all he's got to do is call the police and they will arrest you again, or he could call the DA's office and they'll revoke your bond. It's free. Yes, Your Honor. Can we come back one more time, like just at the end of January? And we'll take it very first. It could be on any day, so they don't have to wait. Mr. Merritt, look at your uh, look at your calendar, because I don't want you to have to wait. I want it to be like quick, quick, quick. What Thank day you. works for you? You're saying just any day in January? Yeah, I mean, obviously, don't make it a Friday because Friday's my TPS. But there's oh, and of course, go ahead, Miss. Oh, and there's one day I have like a four day trial. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna be four. They know that. Miss Free, do you? I mean, I'm pretty wide open in January. Miss Free, do you have a suggestion? Not the 13th, but the, I don't know, 19th, 26th. Uh, let's do. Is it the 19th? Um, 9:30. Yeah, I, 
I was about, I was about to say I have things from nine to ten thirty every Thursday morning. If we could avoid that, but oh, well, it, how about do you want to do the afternoon then? Afternoon um, would be great. Yeah, you got you got establishment at two, so one o'clock. One o'clock on the nineteenth. Yes, that would be great. Is there any reason that doesn't work for you, Miss Williams, Michelle? No, that's good. Right. Okay, so we'll do no, one o'clock. Yeah, on the nineteenth. And Ms. put your email in the chat, Mr. Williams. Make sure we have it, Mr. Mayor. Make sure we have it. We'll send y'all the reset notes. And Ms. Williams. Yes. You know, it's it, it, Ms. Jones. You're, are you her mother, right? Yes, I am. Ms. Williams, if you want to call Mr. Williams, some of his friends, some of his family, call Ms. Jones first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Call her first, please. All right, so this, this is gonna be a trying time for you, Ms. Williams. It's gonna be hard. This is a true tale. Mr. Williams, you have Mr. Merritt's number. Thank you for being so cooperative, but don't wait until it gets this. But like I said, uh, your family, if they're doing it and she's bothering them, she's blowing them up, they could appear, I mean, they could get one just like, just like you did. You can't do it for them, okay? I know, and, and I tell, thank you. And I know it bugs you, but tell your son, I don't know how you, oh, I do scam likely. I get those phone calls. I block them all the time. So if you do, if you block them, that'd be, if they block them, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, he told me he was going to take her off his Instagram and um, he wasn't going to answer any more of her calls. So. All right. So there you go. And I'm sorry it's came to this, Ms. Williams, okay? But I, I want Mr. Williams to stay safe and I want to keep you out of prison. All right. Everybody, are y'all good? Y'all okay with that, Ms. Ms. Jones? So call your mama. Every time you want to do something, call, every time you get mad, you want to call, just call your mama first. Go see your mama. I wish that, oh. yeah, go see your mama. Spend some time with her. Well, they right? live together. They live together, oh, Judge, so it's. Lean on your mama. Lean on your mama. Your mama's there to help you. Lean on her. Okay, Ms. Williams? Yes. And I'm sure Mr. Williams wishes you the best. He's not wishing anything bad. Okay. That's correct. Um, the date is January the 19th? Yes, sir. Okay. And the time again? I'm sorry. One o'clock. Okay. And we'll receive an email with a Zoom link as always. Yeah, if y'all just make sure you put your emails in the chat because it'll go through uh, Georgia. You know, you get that Georgia e file. We'll do that. And uh, I think that'll be all I have that day, right? Or at least we could. Put something on that will take them first really quickly right you have establishment at two but um that morning you're free all right can Sounds i ask good. a question can i ask a question judge sure go ahead. Um, uh well mr mayor probably no. don't want you to I prefer you ask me the questions michelle um okay. is it something that we need to address during the hearing or can it be after the hearing I'll, I'll wait till after the hearing. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you folks so much. Uh, Judge, thank you. And you have the best staff. I appreciate your staff's work because I know they're logging people in and out. So we appreciate it. Yeah, Ms. Bree's working hard. I know she is. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Williams, if you have any issues or concerns, please reach out to me. You know I'm here to, to talk if, if need be. And uh, appreciate your, your time, Judge. Judge, are we free to leave? Absolutely, y'all are free to leave, yep. and we're going to stand down to, to our next calendar at twelve thirty. Y'all stay All right. Hey, Judge, you, I know you, you you just saw my colleague, Mr. Dewaskin, yeah. earlier this morning. So you're you're getting the whole firm's time today. I so know. Who's next? Anybody else? <laughs> no, we're we're out. You're out. We're out of attorneys in our office. So have to be somebody else. Have a good All day. Right. All right, right y'all please stay healthy and safe, and have a good holiday. Happy holiday. Thank you. And we'll be back at 1230, Ms. Free.